Are you unsure of what a muscle imbalance is? Are you just tired of having your muscles suffer over and over again and you just want to change so your health can get back on track? Hey, my name is Michael from Remove Back Pain. And in this video, I'm going to go over how to fix muscle imbalances in your back. Before I do any of that, I just want to let you know that I come out with videos like this on how to remove your back pain, how to get rid of it so you can get back to your ultimate health and back to yourself. I focus on lower back pain also specifically and how to help you get back on track doing the things you need to be doing in your daily life. Um, just a quick story. Um, you know, I've been in the position where I've had terrible back pain. I've had acute, subacute, chronic, and we're talking about um, degenerative, herniated, and then sciatica pain as well. Um, you know, I was going from chiropractors to massage therapists, going back into the doctor's office, subscription medications, painkillers, you name it. And, um, you know, I kept going into this vicious cycle. And I really wanted to change. I really wanted to figure out what it was that was causing my problems. Why was I in continuous pain? Um, you know, at that time, I thought taking painkillers and and NSAIDs and stuff like that uh, were at the most going to help, but they really just prolonged it. It was more of a short-term thing. Um, and then I was constantly exercising, trying to get myself back into shape, trying to get myself uh, back into more strength, right? Trying to get my back more stronger. Um, but I was really avoiding some of the things that help with getting your muscle balance back. Um, and it wasn't until, you know, I finally stopped doing all these things where I was taking conservative treatments. Um, and I talked to a friend of mine and, you know, we sat down and had a conversation and he told me, you know, something that helped him out and one of the biggest causes of it all being a muscle imbalance and ever since I learned about that it just really changed everything for me um, I began to heal again I began to feel uh, like my strength was back my flexibility was where it needed to be um, in a shorter amount of time instead of you know going after repetitive exercising repetitive conservative treatments that only prolong it and really don't go for um, the root of the cause. And the root of the cause of the back pain was a muscle imbalance, or in other words, it's inflammation. And a lot of the times we both go around that. We need to actually tackle that inflammation and that muscle imbalance itself to properly heal naturally. And this is gonna help you for the long term. So then I started feeling better. I got back up. I didn't have to relax anymore. Um, you didn't see me hunching a lot of the time or slouching. Um, my balance was back where it needed to be. So, you know, I was able to do the little things like walking again freely, being able to exercise without that worry in my mind, without straining anything um, or spraining anything or, or causing further injury to something. Um, and I was finally able to enjoy the little things with my family and friends and go out and, you know, play soccer because that's what I did for a long time as a Division One athlete. So I was able to do the things I wanted to travel without feeling the pain anymore. Um, so really before I get on, I'm gonna get on a share screen here. I'm gonna show you kind of the spine and then I'll, you wanna stick with me to the end of it because I'm also gonna get into a, an article that I made for you. So um, really muscle imbalances are caused not by what you think. Um, you th a lot of us, we think, um, we. At times, yes, there's an injury at place that causes you to have a herniated disc, um, bulging discs, thinning discs, uh, many other factors, you know, like arthritis, fibromyalgia, some other things. But um, a lot of the times, muscle imbalances happen because of things you've been doing repetitively on a pattern, and it can be on a really day-to-day -day basis that cause you to have a muscle imbalance. So let's say, for example, if I was sitting on this chair right now and I didn't have support or I was just leaning forward or leaning back and slouching, which would be what happens. And I've done that before, um, especially having to work an office job before. And now these days I kind of just sit here and I help you guys out. But that would cause 
a magnitude of pain moving forward and that would actually cause that muscle imbalance at a point. So what's happening is your muscles are getting weaker. And so one of the tests to figure it out is if you're hunching, if you're hunching forward, most of the time you're gonna have this posterior pelvic tilt where your hips are gonna be pointing forward. Um, and that's causing a lot of the spine, it's normal curvature to go out of balance. So what's happening is if I can't really show you now, but um, in fact, what's, hap what's helping me right now is I have an actual back cushion and then you don't see this right now, but I'm sitting on a seat cushion. If you watch any of other, my, my other videos, I talk about that. But um, what's happening is it's getting pushed more into your, your abdominals and your hips are pointing forward. So now you're like sacroiliac joint, your SI joints, um, you're having the front of your legs, even your hamstrings, your buttocks, your you know, um, tailbone, and every other muscles and joints around the area are going to be suffering. Same thing goes if you have an anterior pelvic tilt, which means like you're, you're kind of going back more, um, and you can have both. But um, what happens is your spine is getting pushed out or inward, and it's going to be causing a lot of disruption, and that's a lot of the reason that factors into having a muscle imbalance. Um, so it's something that happens over time. You stress it out. And it's really because you're not conditioned. As human beings, we're not conditioned to, to, to stay like erected in this um, straightforward posture because you want to maintain your head forward, right? And then you want to have good alignment so you're facing forward 90 degree angle. Um, your feet are on the ground and your, you know, legs are underneath you. So they're not forward or backwards. And that's going to help with all that. Um, but we do things day to day where it hurts us. And um, especially when you have like a herniated discs, uh, a thinning disc, bulging disc, degenerative disc, arthritis, all these other types of pain. Um, I haven't even touched on. There's so many of them. But what happens is, when you do have that, even uh, muscle imbalances will start to occur more often after that. So there's a certain way that you got to take care of your body better. And most people think that generic exercises are going to help. And for a time being, I'm going to show you in a bit, they might help. But you need super targeted stretches and exercises with movements. Okay. And that's what's really going to help get your muscle balance back. And you cannot just strengthen. Here, let me get into I'm going to actually get into a share screen. here. So this is really what happens when, let's see, this pops up. So this is a normal spine. The normal curvature you're seeing down here, you know, L1 through L5 and so forth. Um, I could even put the, let's see here, put the pelvis down here. Kind of just do it quickly here, but um, this is normal. And so you have your vertebrae that are lined just fine. You know, the discs are in between and there's no pressure there, right? So this wouldn't be a bad spine. I mean, I'm not saying it's ideal. Ideal is you want to be straight as forward and you want to be standing straight. You don't want to be slouching. Once you start slouching like this, I mean, even if you slam back, um, this is one of the major problems of slunching forward. And what happens is your spine gets out of curvature and it causes a lot of things like kyphosis um, uh, and so many other things that don't, doesn't, doesn't, ha doesn't have a normal curvature of the spine. So it's pushing into your abdomens. And so what's happening is your hips are likely going to be pointing forward at this stage. And then your vertebrae are suffering, right? They're being pushed inward towards your spine, to, towards your abdominals, and now it's suffering. And what's happening to the rest of your body, which you and I, um, and I was a victim of this, uh, we didn't pay attention too much to our hamstrings. We may, we may pay attention more to the, the front part of our legs, but we didn't pay attention too much to the hamstrings. So what happens is now the muscles in the hamstrings are getting so much more weaker. And what happens is with the muscle imbalance is one side of your body, some muscles, or a muscle or a group um, that's stronger has to compensate for the weaker muscles. It's kind of like when you lubricate a car with oil, right? You gotta have a well, 
done engine that's going to be working for you. Otherwise, it's going to burn out. Um, it's going to leave the residue in there. It, it might still run, but it's going to leave that in there. You, can, you know, you're going to choke the car basically. And it's kind of like having the wheels in the car. You got to have them all in equal pressure. Otherwise, you're sliding one way and the front has to work harder. Eventually, it's going to pop. And if you already have some kind of an injury or, or something um, that you're dealing with, nerve pain, um, you know, it's just going to add more physical and mental stress. And you do not want that to happen. Okay, so it's important. This is the ideal solution. This is not the ideal solution. And so what happens is all your joints muscles um, in different groups, in different areas, your glutes, hamstrings. Those are just a couple, for example. So it's all usually the, the, the muscles around the spine that's causing the problem. And you have to tackle that down. And like I said, you cannot just work on strengthening with exercises. You have to do things that are going to help the upper back. So more of your thoracic spine so your posture is better, right? We need to increase your posture, not just the strength. The strength is, don't get me wrong, that's what you need, but you still need to increase your posture. And until that clicked with me, I was like, no wonder. You know, if you're tired of spending lots of money, and I know how it is with going to chiropractors, massage therapists, physical therapists, doctors, that's not even including the conservative treatments, the painkillers, all these different things you're already doing, like I said before, are just short term. Some of them can work, like chiropractic treatment is good, but you also have to look at it and say, can I treat this myself at home? And the answer will always be yes, there is a way, but you just got to see the alternative route instead of doing what mainstream medication professionals have told you. And so I'm going to get into this article here, and I'm going to leave a link to this article down below. So make sure that you check this out, okay? This will be down below. After you're done here, you can go and look at it even more thoroughly. Um, so in this article, I just kind of go over the problem most people have when it comes to back pain, the number one leading cause uh, for missed days at work, and the number one reason for slouching. And I, and I kind of have myself there as the victim is, is a muscle imbalance. And we we go away from that, right? And I just talked about how your lower back pain is coming from these, but not only limited to walking improperly, poor posture, poor pelvic alignment, hamstrings, hips, glutes, abs, little to no spinal movement. So it's important that while yes, you're strengthening, but you still need flexibility with movement, right? And that's what a lot of things like yoga are for. And I'm going to get into some of the stretches and exercises that you can get into. So don't worry about that. So stick here with me. So this can be fixed. You can fix slou uh, slouching. Um, and there's just a couple of terms here that, you know, I won't name. You can kind of just go through them here um, and look through them. But I just kind of go and give you images on this and, and how to see it yourself. And the difference between acute and chronic imbalances. While acute lower back pain is short-lived, chronic lower back pain will persist for weeks, months, and even years if not treated properly. Um, so that's stuff that's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to you, or if it hasn't, don't let it get to that point. If you can do something about it now, do it, okay? Um, just don't ignore the symptoms. Kind of talk about how your body's like a well-oiled machine, like I kind of just said earlier, how your muscles help you. I kind of left that in here so, so you get a better illustration of, of why they're important to you and why you should really care about them. Um, and, and just how we've evolved as humans, right? From primates to, there's a picture here of a man slouching over his desk while he's on the computer typing, and he's using the wrong form just to say his toes aren't, or his feet aren't on the ground, he's slouching. Um, no good back support on this chair, I could already see that, uh, where his arms are, neck forward, but down. There's so many other ways I could have gone with that. but um. You know, we can see over here as homo sapiens and, and stuff like that as we were growing, cavemen, you know, growing forward. Um, there was a middle part here where we're like, you know, we're, we're at a point where we could because we're being as active, right? Where we're trying to be, um, you know, back then they didn't have so many like nutritious options, right? It was, you know, eat this and that. And, it, and in a way it was nutritious, but it's, it's it was now moving forward where we just have so many options and so many distractions that we got to limit that. So I kind of just say working on a desk on the computer, 
picking up your child, you know, if you're pregnant, um, be careful when you have a child, be careful if you're just generally holding up your child or somebody else's, just be careful how your back is in position to that. And little things like what happened to me, lifting grocery bags, even little things like that, because sometimes you carry more than you need to. And sometimes on one side, it's much more heavier than the other. So there's little ways to offset that. Um, I don't know if you guys shop at Costco or know what Costco is, but you can always put things in a box and just, you know, hold it to you and then just take it all at once like that. And it kind of evenly distributes the weight or just have a bag that's going to have things in there instead of carrying so much once at a time. And I still do that on occasion. You know, I'm still a victim of that. Uh, why people like you and I have muscle pain, you know, I've had it for a while. It's not as bad as it was before. Like I said, I figured this out and how to get away from back pain, you know, going from a 10 to really a one where I don't feel it. And I do the things day in and day out to be able to be where I'm at. So it's all about knowledge and getting yourself in the place that you need to be. That's why I want to share this information with you guys. If I was able to make this transformation, um, it, and it doesn't matter if you have arthritis, fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, joint pain, muscle pain, facet joints, whatever that may be, ankylosis, polyolithesis, so many, so many different ones, right? Um, herniated disc, degenerative disc, you can, okay? Um, and then here I just talk about curvatures, abnormal curvatures, the herniated disc, degenerative disc, uh, disc spinal stenosis, sacroiliac joint SIs back muscles, the list goes on, spinal wheel thesis. And then there's just, just a little guide in that little video that I left here, eight steps to a pain-free back, what's kind of helped me, who I've been mentored by, and, and how I've been able to change. Um, things that happen for, um, oh, that's right. Okay, so this one was, I just wanted to read the sentence over, what causes your back pain, just dehydration, nutrition issues, spinal spinal issues, and tissues as well, strength and flexibility. Um, what you shouldn't do, let's get into the prevention. When you have a muscle imbalance, or if you don't, you know, stay away from this. Toe touches, the reason why, um, it's just going to increase pressure on your spinal discs, right? You're reaching down, and if you already have a herniated disc um, or some form of an injury, you don't want to cause further injury to that, right? It's not necessarily going to stick out and cause that kind of push out, but you're just going to strain it more, right? You're, you're kind of lopsiding your body one way and it's not, it's not already in balance. So it, it's going to be out in a different way and it's going to feel awkward. It's going to have pressure and wear and tear on your ligaments or stretching or stretch your muscles. Um, so this is kind of like where I'm talking about your stomach and then your abs kind of suffering in the same way. Um, and I kind of have examples of myself there. Two sit-ups. You might think that's good, but it's not. I had to learn that the hard way. Because um, instead of using your lower back to lift you up, your hips take on the load, which is the truth. Um, like I said before, if your hips are already slightly pointing forward, even backwards, that's still going to cause more strain on your spine and your vertebrae, your joints, your muscles, every other muscle around the area, uh, especially your hamstrings suffer a lot from doing that. So you want to take off the pressure from that and from away from your disc. Okay. Uh, number three is leg lifts. Um, so when you lift both legs in the air, what this does is put a lot of weight on your abs. And if your muscles are already weaker than somebody else's, the pain will become greater. Um, so just think about that because you're already suffering with your abs, right? Your, your abs are already getting, um, pressure pushed upon from your spine. So causing more to something that you're not used to, that kind of movement will most of the time cause you to shake a little bit when if it's your first time doing that. And so your spine's gonna start shaking a bit. So you don't wanna do that. So prevention and redemption, I'm just gonna go into that. Um, don't do, have two different size dumbbells. If you're lifting weights, right? If you're an athlete or if you just generally like working out, um, I know I still do just to keep myself fit. So I'm still in muscle balance and that's a good thing to do. Um, just make sure they're the, diff the same size. And I would always start small, as small as you can, and then just feel it out and move forward with it. There's no real way to say that you should start with 10 to 25 pounds. Just start the lightest and then move forward. Just make sure they're the same. 
Um, so I'll just kind of go into it here, uh, kind of give you a, a little pop quiz, a little question here, and just kind of going through the physics, kind of, you know, some things you might not want to hear, but it's, it's stuff that I wanted to illustrate a point on. Um, and then I just go heavy, uh, lifting heavy boxes at work. Your weaker muscles can get easily torn from not being ready to handle such a tasks. Like again, with lifting, you got to be careful. You got to take things little by little. Um, and you're not lifting so much with your back, right? You're using part of it as your knees and you're going up. Um, so you're, you're doing it safely, right? You're not putting all the stress on your back. You want to be careful when you do that. And I have other videos on how to achieve this at or in, and uh, articles on how to achieve things at work when you're lifting. So that's for another time. Um, just how to spot a muscle imbalance. So I give you one thing that's helped me. What I've done is how the best and easiest way to spot a muscle imbalance is to run an asymmetry test. It's an examination to see if there's a mismatch between your right side muscles and the left side muscles. And this is all you need. Grab a measuring tape. Measure both sides three times. Take the average and compare. So, okay, this will also be again in the, descri the description down below. So how to fix the root of the cause, right? That's what you're here for. How do you fix it, right? The stuff before, I just wanted to make sure you know that was there. And just so you know what not to do, that's all important for you. Um, maybe it's your hip, lower back tightness, okay? Um, the number one reason, is that of the hips, right? That's that's a big, and that's aside from inflammation, which is what happens. Um, it's a lot of the time with your hips, you know, there's, like I said, they're slightly pointing forward or backwards, causing pain in your hamstrings, your glutes, your back is gonna suffer, your upper back, your neck's gonna be out of alignment, and that's a big issue. Um, so I ask things like, how are your hips? Do you lean forward more than you do back? Is it hard to rotate? And do your hips hurt when you stand up? Um, and so here, so here are some things you can do. So you can do a hip abduction exercise. <clears throat> and I prefer this with the resistance band. It doesn't have to be, but I do uh, use that. So you can go through this. I'm not gonna go through the exact details, um, but there's more here. For core muscles, you can do this here. Um, I do this just about every day and night, um, you know, when I get up. So here's another one. Just kind of goes to the details of how, how long to do it and just more more images there. Squats, a certain kind of squats, you know, without any weights is a good way to start. Don't start off with weights. You know, you can even find a wall to do this with or just out in the clearing like you see there. And there's more instructions there. Um, an alternative approach, like I said, the resistance bands, those are very helpful um, to increase your flexibility is, is, is what it's gonna do. It's gonna give you strength, but it's also gonna give you uh, flexibility much faster. And so I kind of go over the best exercises and stretches for a herniated disc in here um, that you can look for just in case if you want to know about that. But they're also, they're also kind of general in no sense. So you need something more targeted. So here are my three added tips for your road ahead that I want to leave you with that are going to help you. Breathe at all times. So I have a four, seven, and eight breathing technique that I use that I've learned myself. And it's very good. It's very helpful. Check that out. It's like the best thing out there. It's going to really help you. Um, tip number two is just drink a lot of water. In the mornings, what I do every morning is I get water so I can lubricate my discs, um, so I can get that blood flow go going. Because when you have a muscle imbalance, you're cutting off muscle, or you're cutting off blood flow, oxygen, proper nutri uh, nutrients to get into your uh, discs and everywhere around your body. And so that's why you have a lot of pain because you're deprived of that oxygen too. So you need to hydrate your body. Tip number three, invest in the long-term natural treatment, okay? And I spend a little bit of time on talking about this. And um, instead of going from another back pain belt, expensive patches, chiropractic treatments, painkillers, invest in the long-term natural treatment. And I have my number one recommendation in here um, that gives you training and all that. But um, you can go ahead and check that out yourself. Just make sure you go down to the very bottom of this article and look at my number one recommendation. This is by far the best thing that I've done. Um, and this is what I believe in. And this is something that I know is gonna help you out for things, even if you have neck pain, upper back pain, middle, lower back pain, hamstrings, any other kind of muscle imbalance, this is the way to go. 
okay this is the best thing to do so make sure you check it out there will be a link down there so you can click there um, make sure you read this thoroughly um, and that's pretty much it so let me go ahead and stop my share screen here so pretty much um, to fix your muscle imbalance in your back and it really goes for your neck your you know your legs your hamstrings you need to focus on yes strengthening with exercise but also working on your posture your posture is if you work so much on your exercising but you don't do anything about your posture it doesn't make it's not going to ever help so you need to work on all those different sets showed you the exercises on how to fix some more of general ones but there are more specific ones that's why i told you in that last tip to make sure you check out my number one recommendation um, i have another article on that and also put more information in the description down below but you can really get on with this this can really help transform your health um, you know, right now you're just in all this pain with muscle imbalances and, you know, you're going day to day, confused, tired, scared, frustrated, in anger. And now just imagine if you were just to go ahead and take that extra step to understand how to fix it, but how to do it the right way also for long term and naturally how to do this. You'll finally free up more time to spend with your family and friends to do the things you want to do get up and do things on your own terms um, and finally be where you want to and the solution to that is yes exercising but working on your posture and fixing those muscle imbalances and like i showed you in that last tip you can get more information down there for that okay so hopefully that helped you out if you have any questions comments concerns um, i would like to hear from you you can leave me a comment have you tried something that doesn't work what are you doing right now um, are you curious about a certain um, pain that you're having, um, something about muscle imbalances even further that you want me to answer? Go ahead and leave a comment. But also, right now, once you're done, check out the article down below that we just went over and all my extra resources down below. Um, and that is everything. Okay. Thank you.